We have live in the studio with us Dr. Song se professor of law at Gyeonggi University and also a frequent contributor to Arirang News and Arirang TV in general. <laughs> professor Song, thank you so much for making time for us on this very important day. Right, first of all, the early voting and the high voter turnout, they are all contributing to making election history in South Korea. We're making a big noise to the rest of the world, setting right. a good example. How do you see the high numbers affecting the three major parties and maybe even the independent candidates? Well, the high numbers, the 58%, uh, probably it's not as high as one would have hoped because we have this uh, early voting uh, that is fully implemented this year and 12% of the voters uh, have uh, voted early. So from that basis, probably people hoping that more days, more votes, so it would be higher, maybe over 60%, but it did not reach 60%. I think that there's a general fatigue about the dysfunctionality of the, the Korean politics. Uh, but at the same time, just like uh, some Korean dramas, there has been very interesting and sometimes ugly dramas happening on both sides of the, the aisle. So parties have uh, uh, kept some general interest up to contribute to a uh, generally higher number of turnout. But I, I think what's uh, indicating, the, the exit poll is indicating, is that in that high number, uh, the, the, traditionally, Senuri party voters, uh, high, uh, those people who are 60 years or older, maybe they stayed behind because of the, uh, this dysfunctionality and their uh, disillusion. So that higher numbers uh, highs those kind of little dramas that was happening in the voters. Right. Uh, I was at the polling stations as they were about to open the gates this morning. I'm proud mm -hmm. of that fact, although I didn't get much sleep. So <laughs> I, I feel like it was a dream sequence. And a lot of them seem to be not the youngest of the voters. Maybe it was on election day itself. Maybe it's too early to tell. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, certainly, we are making a lot of changes in terms of uh, our election process. Uh, where does Korea stand, in your opinion, in terms of uh, setting the standards for the rest of the world? Uh, I think that uh, our voting numbers have been going up. Uh, not as high as uh, 16 years ago, but it was a special occasion. Uh, so that, that means that the Korean voters are more interested in how the future is shaping up in Korea. And no matter what the dysfunctional uh, showings that we see, there is always an interest that the politicians will make something out of it. Uh, they've been disappointing us generally for the past uh, uh, decades or so, but I think that uh, uh, there is a general hope and also desire to see something happening. A case in point, I think, is the uh, People's Party, uh, which An Chesu has led his uh, the new politics, uh, reforms in a politics kind of mantra uh, a number of years ago. Uh, I was surprised to see, and maybe pleasantly so, uh, that spirit is uh, pretty much alive. And the voters have given uh, pretty much good support. Right, uh, we in were this deeply election. concerned at first, saying maybe here we go again right. compared to the 2012 uh, presidential election. But looks like the scenario is unfolding a little differently this time. Uh, so yeah, kudos to Antersu, the software mogul turned celebrity, turned uh, politician. He seems mm -hmm. to be making a good transition there. Uh, very quickly, Professor, what about some of the the major impact like? Uh, uh, the, the tragedies over the years. How much of how much do they play a part in evoking stronger emotions and a, a sense of oneness or sense of the need or the urgency to get involved in the Korea's democratic the democracy for the voters? Right. Uh, Korea has experienced some uh, traumatic events like Seoul, and also uh, North Korea has been uh, provoking a lot of the different emotions and uh, crisis. I think that the, there has been an expectation that the leadership of Korea would kind of model those through and uh, show some um, a good future or, or uh, those future that uh, we can all subscribe to. But uh, I think that this voting uh, shows that uh, the politics in general in Korea has failed in that and that uh, anticipation. Uh, of course, this higher voter turnout is uh, still saying that, well, you know, show us going forward. But uh, especially the ruling party not reaching even the half point if the exit poll is uh, to be believed, then it's a, a, a great uh, uh, mandate for the, all the political actors to get it right. And uh, the ruling party is not getting the carte blanche kind of uh, trust or the vote this time.
Right, shifting our focus to the ruling party, the Sendri party, it seemed like they had a lot of uh, advantageous, advantageous points, considering that uh, a lot of the crisis issues would actually prompt people to be more supportive of the ruling party. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And also, there's a lot of internal strife and division in the main opposition bloc. But right. despite that, uh, the Sendri party is seeing very little reasons to celebrate during this election, judging by the numbers. They're not getting anywhere close to the numbers they expected. Right. Uh, this was uh, certainly the Sendri party's election to lose, and they did that. They managed to do that. Um, everything was going right for them. Uh, the opposition party was in this shambles. Uh, they, they had the splintered parties. So uh, if the election math is to be, to be applied, I think the Senator Party would have had a good result. Uh, but the Senator Party on their own had the internal strife that, that greatly disappointed people. And I think that this point was greater because the Senator Party is a ruling party and they're supposed to be uh, the one that makes difference in, in the politics and also uh, governance. And I think that there's a smaller point. I don't know how big this factor was. This cross-voting th this time uh, a lot of people might have uh, voted for uh, the, the People's party, party for the party vote. But when it comes to the candidate vote, if right. they thought that their candidate in the People's Party would not have a chance to uh, win it, then they might have voted for another opposition leader. In effect, making it a, a, a device to consolidate uh, of the candidates on the voter level not on the party level or on the precinct level. So if that could be studied, I, I think that will make a change and make, uh, would prompt a lot of different strategies going forward. Right, we see a lot of green and blue at the moment, but we might see a, a more dominating hue of red by the time we see the individual numbers, especially when it comes to specific candidates, right. as you mentioned, Professor. And uh, what about uh, being one of the wi most wired country in the world? How does that affect the general public support of the ruling Sendri party, will they, will they be, would, would the factors like being connected to share their views more openly in public, would that have worked against the Sendri party in some sense every time they had uh, some stumbles along the way? Uh, I, I think the Sendri party has uh, f probably failed in that regard uh, when it comes to the communication with uh, uh, the different generations. I think they're too busy with internal strifes and that it didn't translate well to uh, uh, voters' uh, sentiments. And I think that they had a lot, of, a lot of issues they can tackle, especially economics and also welfare uh, matters. And they rightly so pointed out that the, the opposition party was the stumbling block and they, because of the advancement of the National Assembly law, uh, the, the, their, the, this 19th session of the, the National Assembly was called the Vegetable uh, Assembly. But uh, th those kind of things were uh, probably legitimate reasons to uh, point out that uh, things are not working well in, in politics. But it's not a good reason for the voters. Uh, for whatever reasons, if uh, Senator Party has the, the Blue House and also uh, in a, a higher share of the National Assembly uh, seats, probably they should have found a way to do it. But that message has been missing. That message has not been effectively came out. And when they had uh, internal strifes, I, I think that that disappointment kind of loomed far bigger uh, to the voters' mind, uh, no matter what happened in the opposition side. This is a rapidly changing world, and of course, when it comes to Korea, trend move in and out so quickly. And I think right. that applies in politics as well. And the ruling Senate Party, being the bigger party, was at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the biggest receiving end of all the criticisms. So it was an unfortunate timing for them, and of course, unfortunate that they could not evolve and adapt quickly. Mm -hmm. But we'll see if the other parties will be able to learn from those mistakes as, uh, w as the results come out for this uh, general elections. But only time will tell. Hopefully, they will learn and adopt better this time around. So right. with a lot of question marks being uh, popping up during and right before the elections, once the results are out, how do you see the, s s the parties making minor changes or possibly not making changes, rather sticking with their guns once it is all over and once they have 
understanding of where they stand and what they can and cannot do? Well, I don't think it's going to be minor changes. I think it was uh, widely anticipated that both parties would, have, uh, would go through uh, great changes because the ruling Senate Party, the head of the Senate Party, Kim Mo-sung, uh, said he would step down and he will step down. And that changes the landscape of what the next step would be in, in especially anticipation for uh, the presidential election, who's going to be the, the, the big uh, front runner. And because they lost to Oh Se-hoon, it seems like, uh, from the exit polls, he uh, failed to get a seat. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty murky and very dark uh, going forward. I think that the pro-park faction has lost confidence because they were in charge of the election strategies and if the turnout is bad probably they'll be blamed for it so there are a lot of a lot happening in the the ruling party to make changes and we have not seen yet what the the picture would be opposition party would be uh, probably uh, bigger uh, in terms of changes because uh, Kim Jong-un uh, he might step down because the election is over uh, I don't think Moon Jae-in has recovered or gained the, the confidence from the people, especially the dismal showing of the Tominju party in the Honam area. So there, there is no clear winner and there's no uh, front runner in terms of presidential election uh, anticipation. So because of those kind of things, I think that the leadership will go through a lot of changes. And as you pointed out, I think the people would say, OK, uh, we kind of set uh, uh, our piece about the ruling Senate party. But the big win in the opposition party is not uh, for their own good deeds. Right. So I think that there will be uh, expectation uh, from the people that opposition party has another chance to reform themselves and change themselves. Uh, to fit uh, the voters' expectations. So right. whoever said, wins, will it will be the People's Party, regardless of their name. And of course, right. let's hope uh, the politicians and the people are not just voting and vouching for changes for the sake of changes. Well, thank you so much for coming in today, Professor Song se We hope to have you here with us to share some of your personal wisdom again sometime soon. Thank you.